So it says uh, match the coordinates with their corresponding pairs of Y coordinates on the unit circle. So we're going to have to make, they don't tell us what quadrant it lives in. Um, so we're going to have to make the assumption. Um, well, I guess we don't have to make the assumption. So let's just do the math and I'll, uh, sometimes if I explain it too much at the beginning, it kind of is confusing. So um, basically what we want to know is what value of X will give me either plus or minus the square root of five all over three. Okay, so we're, we're trying to solve for that X. So we're because they're including plus or minus, we could just use any reference angle. So we're thinking in our heads of a right triangle. Okay, we'll assume maybe it's in the first quadrant. Where this is our angle theta, we have this point here, which is our x comma y. But remember, if this was the xy plane, where this is the y-axis and this is the x-axis, then this is the opposite because it's across from the angle theta. The side across from the 90 degree angle is the hypotenuse and the side here is the adjacent. Okay, so here's an interesting thing though. The adjacent side if, if I go from the origin, the length of the adjacent, that gives me the X value of this thing right here. And then if I go up or down, that gives me the hypotenuse, okay? I mean, not the hypotenuse, the opposite. So when we think in terms of X comma Y, we can also think in terms of adjacent comma opposite. So, to figure out the corresponding x value on the unit circle, there's an interesting thing. On the unit circle, what we're really doing is that when we say unit circle, that means that the circle has a radius of one unit. So the radius on the circle is equal to one. Well, if I draw a circle, let me use a different color so it doesn't confuse anybody. If I draw a circle on the XY plane, the radius of the circle is the same as the hypotenuse. So think of this as like being the center of the circle. And in other words, what I'm, what I'm saying in a roundabout way is that the hypotenuse is one. So what we have here is we can use the Pythagorean identity to figure out what's going on. In other words, I could say A squared plus B squared equals C squared, where the C is the hypotenuse, right? C is always the hypotenuse. So we could think of this in terms of the opposite squared plus the adjacent squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared but really, the hypotenuse squared is 1, which is 1 squared. Hold on one second. Somebody jumped in here. Huh. That was weird. I must have jumped out. All right. So then what do I know? Well, I know that the opposite, the opposite is equal to the square root of 5 over 3 plus or minus. So now I got to figure out what the corresponding 
um, adjacent is. So if I subtract the hypotenuse or the opposite from both sides, I get that a squared is equal to h squared minus the opposite squared. And then I take the square root of both sides. Yikes. Let me scroll down here a little bit. So then I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Now when I do that, I get A, my adjacent side, is equal to um, basically the square root of 1 squared minus the square root of 5 all over 3 squared, which is equal to 1 minus um, 5 over 9, which is equal to, if you want to think of it, 1 is the same as 9 over 9. 9 minus 5 is 4. So it's the square root of 4 over 9. And if you take the square root of 4, that's equal to 2. If you take the square root of 9, that's equal to 3. So we did a lot of work there, but we got that the adjacent side is equal to 2 thirds. So what does that tell us? That tells us that this value right here is equal to 2 over 3. Let me write that a little better. So. And that's what we were looking for. Now, if we continue to do the next one, now that I don't have to explain as much, if we do the next one, that should be fairly easy. What am I looking for? Well, I'm looking for some value for x that will work with this corresponding y. Okay? But really what I'm thinking of is what is the adjacent with regards to the opposite. Well, one thing I know is because they said it's on the unit circle is that when I draw my right triangle like this, my hypotenuse H is gonna equal one because that's the radius of the unit circle, which is one. And then my adjacent is here because the opposite is across from the angle theta. Well, they give us the opposite because the y value is the opposite. So we're going to say plus or minus the square root of 7 over 3. Now, you might say, Mr. Adams, I noticed that you plugged in the plus or minus. Well, when we do the Pythagorean identity, we square this value here. So if we did use the negative root, in other words, if we said negative uh, square root 7 over 3, when we square that, it becomes a positive value. When we use the principal root or the positive root and we square it, we still end up with a positive value. So it doesn't matter which one we choose. Well, we don't know what the adjacent is, okay? And remember... This point right here, the x comma y, is really the same as the values as the adjacent comma opposite. Okay? So we got to find that. So we say that O squared, the opposite squared plus the adjacent squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. And then we know that if we... If we subtract the opposite from both sides, we get the adjacent squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared minus the opposite squared. And we're going to take the square root of both sides. 
Um, so then what do we end up with? Well, we're going to end up with the adjacent is equal to h squared, which is 1 squared, minus the square root of 7 all over 3 squared. Um, in the next line, we're going to get the adjacent is equal to the square root of 1 minus, when I square a square root of 7, I end up with the base, which is 7. And then I have to square the 3, which is just 9. Well, this is the same as the square root of 9 over 9 minus 7 over 9. So this is just the square root of 2 over the square root of 9. So now, the reason I wrote it this way, really this is equal to the square root of 2 over 9. Right, if I do the math underneath the square root symbol. Um, I do, if I do it this way, though, I know what the square root of 9 is. So I got the square root of 2 over 3. So I did all that work to say that the square root of 2 over 3 works. Okay. Now, let's do the next one. Um, now I've got plus or minus three-fifths. So what they want us to find, what value for x will give me this y value? And remember, this is really the adjacent comma opposite. Um, well, what do we know? We know that h is equal to 1. We know that the opposite is equal to plus or minus 3 over 5, but we don't know what the adjacent is yet. So we draw a right triangle. The opposite, or I'm sorry, the hypotenuse is across from the 90 degree angle, that's 1. If this is theta, then the opposite is across from that. That's plus or minus 3 over 5. And we don't know what the adjacent is. Now, we can skip everything and just go to that end product, right? We could just say, well, the adjacent is equal to h squared minus o squared. Well, then we would say that this is equal to 1 squared, which is just 1. Now we'll write it out. Minus 3 fifths squared. Now I could mathematically put the plus or minus thing here. Well, it doesn't matter. When I square it, you're going to end up with the same thing. So in the next line, we get the adjacent is equal to the square root of 1 minus 3 squared. Remember that when we square this, we're squaring this and this. So we're going to end up with 9 over 25. Um, that's the same as 9 over 9 is the same as, or not 9 over 9. 25 over 25, because I can't add those unless I have a common denominator. 25 over 25 is the same as 1 minus 9 over 25. That equals um, 16 over 25. Now, what's interesting about that is that I can, one of the properties of exponents is I could take the square root of 16 all over the square root of 25. The square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of 25 is 5. 
So then way up here, we put four over five. This is what we're looking for. Four over five. Okay. One more problem. I want to know what I plug in here that will work with this corresponding Y. Remember that this is the opposite, comma, the adjacent. Or I'm sorry, the other way around, the adjacent, opposite. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> adjacent, comma, opposite. So um, I'm not even going to draw my little triangle, right? We know that the adjacent is equal to the hypotenuse minus the opposite, right? The hypotenuse squared minus the opposite. We also know because it's the unit circle that H is equal to 1. That's why it's called the unit circle. The radius of the unit circle is 1. Um, so then I've got A is equal to 1 squared minus, um, and that was what, 2 root 2 over 3. Now that's a crazy one. Squared. I just want to make sure that I'm writing all the notation. Well, we'll look at it in just a second. So the first one's easy. 1 squared is just 1. Now, here's what's weird is I got to think, what is, if I push this through, I'm going to square this, I'm going to square this, and I'm going to square this. So 2 squared is 4, so this becomes 4 times the square root of 2 squared, which is just 2. So 4 times 2 is 8, all over 3 squared, which is 9. I need a common denominator. 1 is the same as 9 over 9 minus 8 over 9. So that means that my adjacent is equal to 1, 1 over 9. And again, the property of exponents, I could take the square root of 1 all over the square root of 9. And that gives me 1 over 3. So the value that I was looking for is 1 over 3. And that's it for that one.